this one's going around. Is this lease signed? All right. To our understanding, no, it hasn't been signed. Um, is there anyone here that may be able to answer that this question is about for us? Lease anyway. This is like prior to there being a lease. This is it's, 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 it's an MLA. Lease, so, this, so this isn't a done deal. No, no this no. is not a done deal as of yet, and that's why we're we're having this meeting now. Um, because to my understanding, they made this decision without any of us knowing anything about it, like it was okay. So in order to, for us to be able to, to try to save this establishment, we're making this public notice now like it should have been from the beginning. Yes, Ms. Um, who is this person, well, whatever name it's called, going to be called? Who are they? Where they come from? Because my... My issue is, if you're going to have a child in school there, name it after Mr. Surratt, Ann Hill, Kenny right. Lee, Mr. You. Clark, that wrote, that did their job there and brought us up when he was living there. Who's this African person? I mean, they think they're going to play kids by naming it an African, 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 African name. Yeah. Whatever the person is, who is this person? Yeah. She, 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 she did it again. She did it again. Well, she ain't going to be I never heard of her. Can I ask a question? Are you looking to buy down or rent it? <laughs> um, as they stated, that they were going to come in on a five-year renting at that moment. Now, to me, that's a joke. Because you're going to take all of this money to do all of these repairs, to rent it for five years, and then leave. No. No. Now, it don't take a blind man to see that. But so I was to me, told they to me, one on. moment. To me, this is about a power trip, yeah. a money trip, yeah. and a control trip. Yeah. 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 I was told it's four or five year leases. That, yes. So they get it for 20 years. 20 years, oh, yes. They can, if they want it, or after five years, they can say forget you. So it's all on there. But we don't know. Okay, I have um, a gentleman in the back. Yeah, I'm just wondering, was there a school in there previously? I remember, was the community prep? Were, yeah. were they in there at one time? Yes, yes there was. Yeah, was. this community prep when it was in there. About 30 years ago, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be passing the mic around to people. Um, you have any questions? Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, I don't know if my question will be answered now, but I'm sorry, can I have your name, please? Petra Edwards. Um, what, and I want to acknowledge I haven't been in Providence in about 25 years, so I'm just moving back here. So how did we get to the place that Dreadful was in a financial situation where they feel the need to leverage outside resources in order to be where they are? What, What's not the, what's not happening in the context of how the institution is being run and operationalized that they need to go outside to find resources because they're saying a percentage as a way to say there'll still be some part of this will still be John Cole, even though it's a very small percentage, right? There. So there's something happening in the way in which that got us to this fight. So I don't want us to all just fight for not having a school there. We need to understand why is it that we, this institution doesn't have a capacity to sustain itself. Yes. And what is accountability does the everybody have to make sure that happens and that everybody is the board, if we care as a community, and what the hell is this state or city doing for that institution to be able to sustain itself and actually live on its mission and vision. I'll keep on going around and uh, for what it's worth, we're just trying to keep the comments to three minutes, the comments and questions. So uh, who else wanted to speak? To answer her question, last time I, I did read an article where John Hope lost all their funding from like United Way and other agencies because things weren't going properly run there. So they took the money because they couldn't account for where the money was going. But that, I mean, that was years ago. And yeah, I'm sorry, can I have your name? Joy Edwards. Edwards. <laughs> 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 
That was years ago, because I remember going to a community meeting at John Hope. Yeah. Okay. And so it's like nothing has changed. And what, so what are you going to do differently, even if, you, if it stops from passing? When John Hope is in the same space that it was, I'm going to say, at five years Five years ago. Yeah. What's changed? Yeah. Did the board change? And they still they still don't know what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just, yeah, uh, to answer that, I just have one other question. I have one other question. No, that's okay. If they, the percentage of, of what they want to use in the report, like if, if it became 50 50, are you open to it? Is it the percentage that's the, the issue, or just if the, um, the whole thing is an issue? The percentage of job hope that they want to use because it is income. And so I just, but it sounds like it's, they're just trying to, like my cousin said, yeah, back door. So, so the thing is, if they came to the community, if they came to Mary Kay and said, we'd like to open a school, what do you think? I don't need this. We'd like, I don't need this. We'd like, we'd like to open a school. We want to do this, blah, 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 blah. And they were transparent. I don't think there'd be a huge problem, but the problem now is they've got an MOA. They've already had the lottery and filled the school with their children. Our children aren't welcome in that school. They've already had the lottery. So they backdoored everything to make sure that by the time we found out about it, there was nothing we could do. The only reason there was a meeting was because, and we found out, I was at that meeting. The only reason there was a meeting was because they're required by law to have a DEM meeting. And when we were there, the woman tried to shut us down and say, oh, we're only talking about environmental issues, because she didn't want to deal with us. If it had been transparent, if she had come to the community and said, we want to have a school, and they lied about things. Somebody in the community said, are you going to have Providence teachers? And she said, unfortunately, we're not allowed to. And I know that's not true because I'm on a board of a Providence high school that's a charter school, and they have Providence teachers. So it's many things like that. I just wanted to make this um, clear. It's not a matter of what lottery they had. The, what we're here for is to save John Holt. Yep. It doesn't matter to me what the, the, the steps in which that they decided they wanted to take. We're here to make sure that we do what we can to save this facility, period. That's right. That's right. Who was that? Um, I just want to actually address what was just said. So. Um, I, I think a lot of people in this room don't know, but actually youth from this community were involved in creating the school from the beginning. They not only were part of the design, it's low income youth from all around here. Low income youth of color, that's what Young Voices, I run Young Voices, that's what Young Voices does. Yeah, I don't think that Young Voices is representative of the whole So that we can just hear all sides. I want to tell you all sides. My name is Aisha Hall, and I just have a question. We say we want to save John Hope. How about if this is the way of saving John Hope? Without our kids? Without our kids. Let me ask you something. Why is there a problem with the charter school, number one? For the last five or six years, John Hope has been going through the same thing. So now we're back at this circle. And there's a couple of us that sat out in front of John Hope talking about the same thing. We're going through the same thing. So we're back around full circle. What are we going to do? So if this is the way that the charter school is coming in, if they take taking 96% and we still got 4% and John Hope is running and people are going to school, they get education, the community is building, where's the problem? Because if not, like she said, we're going to be right back to where we was five or six years ago. I think, um, once again, I'm going to say that it is not about the school coming in, the charter school, and yes, we've had the same issues, but how about if we rolled out 
the board that is sitting there and allowed new people to come in with new ideas to bring better things for the center, we wouldn't be in this position. So out of the old and in with the new is our people doing our own thing. Yeah, but we're gonna take one at a time and I and I get and I get that. Ms. Vanessa? So um, I guess um, I have some questions and my name is Vanessa Daly, and I am one of the people that are generationally vetted in this agency, meaning that my parents mm -hmm. and my grandparents mm -hmm. um, are part, my grandparents are part of the people who started John Hope um, on the east side of Providence, okay? So when we talk about community, it's not necessarily, I don't know who the youth voices is, but to understand John Hope, you have to understand the generational community members that are embedded in, that, in, in, in this agency. And so it may be the voices, but we know that the generational community has not been reached out to. So there have been a couple of good questions one of the reasons, and I hear finances being brought up, okay? That is the reason why there needs to be a meeting between the leaders and the ones that are organizing with the John Hope Board leadership because we need to understand what is the financial condition of John Hope. Right. But because we can throw up finances, but that does not necessarily have to be the case. Case in point. I have a lot of passion for this because I was also part of the community back in 2013 where we went through this exact same thing. And what we talked about was transparency. We talked about communication. And unfortunately, the transparency and the communication is lacking here. So first we need to understand if the community is going to help. and we. We said then we wanted to partner with John Hope, and we're saying now we want to partner with John Hope to see what are the issues and how can we work to fix it. I will tell you, I, my, I have opposition and, and to have any discussion as to John Hope, be, as to the charter school being located at the John Hope Settlement House. First and foremost, while it's an educational, formal educational school, they don't fit John Hope's mission, okay? And so the board of directors should be leading this organization according to this corporation's mission. That's, that's first. Now, for those that were at that meeting, when they put the blueprint up, John Hope, which we know as the old building, which is John Hope, because everything else is a foyer that connects the daycare and the gyms. So John Hope actually is the three-story structure. According to the blueprint, the entire structure is in their possession. Now, I ask you this question and maybe board this question because I don't know the answer to it. When you have a school, any school, that school is in lockdown from the time that their school begins until the end of the day. And you have to ring a bell to gain access. So what I say to you is, what happens to John Hope's food pantry? Where they feed the homeless, they feed those that need food, that come in there on a weekly basis um, to participate in that program. John Hope has a senior program which operates one day a week where seniors are welcome to come and they spend four hours a day. If you have a school occupying 96% of this building, you cannot allow people off the street in to have activities. That's my question. What does that look like? Because I know I can't go to any school and just go and walk through the building and do other things. Case in point, they used to use the schools for voting. People coming off the street to vote. What happened on that day? Schools closed because there cannot be an intermingling of outside people and school people. Another thing about this blueprint, and I have not seen it again, 
we're talking about major construction and major renovation. John Hope's three-story building as it is now, based on what I saw, mm -hmm. is all changed. So John Hope has a computer lab that hasn't been used. Maybe it's used during the summer. That formerly was used, um, led, and open to the community to come in and learn how to work the computer, learn um, how to improve skills, use the internet for job searches. Based on their diagram, the computer room is gone. The conference room has now become, if anybody's been in that conference room, has now become a library, a resource library. So in my mind, I'm thinking, no one is spending that amount of money to make that much renovation to walk away in five years. Right. Right. Not, go not going to happen. So I would, I hope, that the board will meet with the community and talk about the finances. And while we're saying that John Hope has not moved forward, we've been through this again. Those that remember, all of the funding was pulled back in 2016. John Hope is still operating. So the question is, how can John Hope still be operating with no funding? One last point, because I don't want to monopolize this, but this is my passion. When we look at the, the diagram of what the school was going to take, the current daycare center was cut in half with the school taking half the daycare and leaving John Hope with three classrooms. So what that does is that puts John Hope in a position where it cannot grow. So, and we also can't service the community because if parents have their toddlers, we're maxed out and we can't serve them. One more thing to think about, finances. Where does John Hope get its revenue if they're not getting any funding? And so it is from their daycare services. So my question is, how does the board of directors cut off their funding because that's exactly what it's going to do when you cut away uh, two classrooms. You, you're cutting off two classrooms, so you're cutting off revenue. And isn't this what we talked about four years ago when the group homes were shut down and the revenue was lost? But most importantly, we generate that revenue because we're providing a service to the family that needs it. And that's what John Hope's mission was. Supportive social services. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deborah Dell. I'm head teacher of the preschool four or five. Now I'm going to continue where Vanessa left off. Now they said they already had their lottery. I have 13 in that classroom that are going to kindergarten. Well, why wasn't they offered the position? Ooh. Ooh. Why wasn't they offered? But they're not good enough? Yep. So what do you tell them? They're going to leave John Hope, but there's going to be two kindergarten classes in there? Wow. Now that's a shame, yes. because the kids are not being thought of at all. And that's all I got to say. Anybody else? I don't disagree with anything that anyone just said. I mean, I grew up in John Hope as well. My first job was at John Hope. Um, one of my first jobs out of college was at John Hope. I love John Hope. But I think that what we have to look at is if, in fact, John Hope is still struggling, what are we going to do differently? Because we can't, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. And so my thing is, 
we can sit here and say this is what job hope is, but maybe some things need to change so we can generate some money so that the things that we all grew up on can continue. But we've got to find another way as we to get money. Get rid of the board. But now, I want to say this too because the last time that was the solution was to get rid of the board. And we got rid of the board. And we have to say that again. It was, I mean, it was, it was the same thing. That I, mean, I thought the board made really bad choices. Once Mr. Whitten left, I don't think they had a good executive director. That's, that's, that's my position. And your board chooses your executive director. So you, you, you can get rid of them, but you still have, we have to change our way of thinking and doing things a little differently. Okay, so. what, anyone else have any other questions? What I'd like to start doing now, okay, Mr. Buchanan. My name is Joseph P. Buchanan, I'm the President the President. What I have to say is that, um, some of the board members up there will be protesting where they're at. We'll be protesting in church, the houses, the stores. If everybody wants to protest with myself, it's going to start Saturday morning. We're going to be at Wigan Village. We're going to be protesting at White Church, Mr. Scott's Church. Good. Number one. That's 9.30 in the morning. Oh, shoot. Then after Saturday, all those that attend, I'll let you know what we're going to be protesting Sunday. I understand. Because this is a serious matter. If we don't stick together as a community, nothing will be done. So all you folks that are talking about saving John Hope, I hope I see you at this rally, 930 Saturday, right across from the village, because we will, we will be going to uh, Mr. Scott's church. I'll make you know in advance, so the church has morning, so that he has one. But one thing, make this clear, that we have to be there. So stop playing around. For far too long, this community has been playing around. All I've been doing is providing this service. I mean, let's, let's provide some real service to ourselves and to our community and to our children. Thank you and God bless. Hi. In the beginning, when this woman over here first started speaking, sorry for anybody if I could offend it for interrupting, but it's passionate to me not only because of John Hope, where so many, you know, uh, people spent so many years but also because of the community, because of the West End community. And that's what it's also about. It's about our community being renamed by people who want to move in and take over that's right. when the West End became the West Side. Right. Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. It's the West End. It's the John Hope community. It's John Hope families. Right. And just like Ms. Vanessa said so well, so many of these families who grew up generationally in John Hope, and that's what this building is. It's not just a building, it's a family. And for anyone who knows the West End, knows it's family. East Side got Billy Taylor, family. We have John Hope for the West End, not the West Side. And that's why I jumped on that. What community? I asked Deb, any of your kids or grandkids called in to be a part of those youth? No. Ask any of these families, excuse me, I was, now I'm talking. Any of these kids who were asked to bring it down, outreach. I'm an organizer, there's lots of organizers in this room. And when I hear about meetings to discuss, everyone knows how I feel about that. Because most of the time, when the community finds out about meetings to discuss, the decisions have already been made. That's right. right. When we got called about a semester and asked to give our input, decision already made, a semester closed. What was that? One of the biggest family schools, the small, one of the smallest schools, but a family school. Yeah. Our kids went to the annex, the a semester, went to yeah. Bridgeham. We stayed yeah. in our community, yeah. and they took that from us. Yeah. What is the West End right now? We have the highest population of black and brown men under governmental control. Not college, right. not school, but police and government. Those are the systems that come into our community right now. Police and parole. And now you want to take more and more from our kids. The school to prison pipe pipeline is running rampant all around the country. And now you're talking about it now, taking babies from what they know, taking pride away from black and brown kids. For so many years, the only way that black and brown kids were taught their history is if they learned it in family and in the community. And you're taking that away from the kids. 
trying to take it away once again by taking away the real meaning of John Hope. And like I said once again, and we can't forget this, John Hope is more than a building. John Hope is more than an institution or an agency. John Hope is people. John Hope is the people in this room. So many people I learned, Miss Joanne. <laughs> when I first came to Rhode Island, and I, I learned how to organize. I learned how to organize Miss Joanne, Paul Fitzgerald, Mr. Whitman. I learned how to do my job. I learned how to stand up for my kids. I learned that as a white woman, these brown kids that weren't so cute for now 40 and in their late 30s, it wasn't so cute then. And I learned I was gonna have to teach them and have a circle around me to teach my kids what they needed to know. And my kids are empowered people because from coming to meetings like this and having people around them that, that would teach them because they knew they had to use their voice. And we are going to have to do that, whether it takes rebuilding, shutting stuff down, or whatever. But we just really need to remember through it all. It's not about 96% of the building, 98, whatever it is. It's about community decision and keeping families alive. Um, is there anyone else with any more questions? Hi, my name's Jessica. I just wanna, um, there's a lot of uh, talk around um, <laughs> the children of John Hope not being invited to, to be part of the lottery. And I just wanna make a point of um, clarification about how charter schools work in that they are not neighborhood schools, which means that they do not draw from the mile as the crow flies from the community. This particular charter school will draw from all over Providence. Um, and it requires an application and it requires a lottery. It, 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 it is by its very nature exclusive in some ways. And so that is, um, when I hear you know, people saying, you know, they didn't ask our kids. It's, it's actually in the nature of how a charter school draws its students is through these, the application process and the lottery, which puts lottery barriers up. It also doesn't pull from the neighborhood. So it is not a neighborhood school. And even if it was located here, there is no guarantee that any child from John Hope daycare or otherwise will get in. That is divisive. No matter how you feel about charter schools, it divides communities. And John Hope was one of the very first leaders of the NAACP. And having done some research on this many years ago, I know that the NAACP for almost a decade um, has had a moratorium on the expansion of charter schools because of the issues of charter schools causing more inequity in the communities in which they are cited. So I, I, I think that, you know, I live a block and a half away from John Hope. Um, my daughter attends a semester. We are a part of our neighborhood and it is a beautiful thing. Um, I, I just wanted to add that point so that folks know actually how charter schools gain their students, um, and it is not neighborhood specific. Hi, um, my name is Shonda, and I just have one question. I don't know if this was asked because I had to run out, but who's taking care of the maintenance of the building? Is the charter school gonna pay for whatever needs to be fixed? Yeah. Who's taking fiscal responsibility? The that the um, capital would be responsible for the structural stuff, but other things, um, 
the um, charter school would be, what it sounds like John Hope would be. If this is yeah, accurate, yeah, right. the landlord and John Hope, even though they only have 4%, is it possible? Well, great, so that's the problem. If the landlord is fiscally responsible but is only holding 2 to 4% of the of the property, that doesn't even make sense at all. Okay. I mean, we gotta do better.